And someone said, you should join the track team, man. You run fast. Join the track team. Pretty soon he won a medal in track. Pretty soon he won another medal. Got his picture in the paper. People said, that's Sean Marcy. Wow. He won another medal. People started to notice the boy. Got another picture in the paper. And one day, Sean came home with a bulge in his lip. And his mom, who was a registered nurse, noticed it. And she said, what's that, son? Well, I, I've been dipping, mama. You've been dipping? Well, who taught? Well, the coach didn't do it, but some of the other guys on the team do it. I like it. And I like to think that she said to him, Son, you've always been a responsible boy. You've cleaned up your room. You've got decent grades in school. You've worked hard. You've been a good son. And I know how responsible you are. And I'm not worried about this. I'm not worried. And I know you're going to make a right choice. It's your choice about this tobacco, this dip tobacco. All right, Mama, I'll think about it. Came back two weeks later, said, Mom, I thought about it, I'm going to quit. Came back a week later, Mama, I tried to quit. <laughs> I couldn't do it. That's OK, son. She said, try again. He tried again, and he failed. And he failed, and he failed, and he failed, and he could not stop. He was crossing that bridge, becoming a man. She couldn't nag him. You can't nag somebody about their addiction. She had to let him go and be a man. And she quit nagging him. And maybe three times a year, she was asking him to quit. I didn't know him. Well, one day, Sean came home, and he had a kind of sad look on his face, worried look, and he said, Mama, my tongue hurts. Well, honey, let me see it. Stuck at his tongue, there on his tongue, the size of a half dollar, was a great big red sore with a hard white core in the middle. And she said, oh my, we better go to the doctor. They went to the doctor, and the doctor said, I'm sorry, son, but we're going to have to do some tests. They ran some tests. A few days later, Sean's around the house and kicking back on a Sunday, waiting for his friends to come over like he always did. And his mama picked up the phone in her room. He heard the ringing. <laughs> picked up the phone like she always did. And pretty soon, he heard what he thought was a sob coming from his mama's door. And he went back to the door, listened, softly opened the door. There she was, sitting on the bed with her Back to him, looking at the window, shoulders heaving. <laughs> and she was crying. And he went up to her and he said, Mama, what's wrong? And she turned and the tears were coming down her face. And she said, Son, you have cancer in your tongue. We got to go back to the doctor. And the doctor said, I'm sorry, boy, but we're going to have to amputate, cut out your tongue. Cut out my tongue. Cut out my tongue. Will I be able to talk again? I don't think you're going to be able to talk like you are now, son. Well, <laughs> angry. Can I still run in the track meet on Friday? Yes, son. You can run in the track meet on Friday. But after that, I'm going to need you in here. And he ran in the track meet on Friday. And I don't know if he won or he lost, but he did his best, which is what sport is. And after that, he went in and they amputated his tongue. People from the town sent cookies, cakes. He couldn't have them. He had a feeding tube going up his nose down into his stomach to pump food in there. He couldn't chew food. He was in pain, the pain. He would have to have a second operation and later a third operation. I'm going to show you a picture of what he looked like after the first operation with part of his jaw removed, part of his nose cut out, part of his neck muscles removed. And he swore that he'd get better. I'm going to get better, Mama. You'll see. Well, after three months, the cancer came back. And they had to go back for that third operation, which would leave him with a foot-long gash with three drainage tubes stuck into it, two needles going into his wrist for painkiller, a, a tube up his nose and down into his stomach to pump food in there all over again. And a, few, a month or two later, he vowed, Mama, I'll get better. His best friend came down from Chicago for what would be their last visit. And in this picture, he's 19. And it would be their last visit. And the friend said, what if we got a photographer? And before he could even say a photographer, Sean, who had no tongue and could not talk, wrote on a piece of paper, no, 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 
I feel so ashamed. I don't want anybody to see me like this. Just get out and go away. But what if other kids could see what tobacco can do, Sean? And he thought about it, and he finally wrote, OK, bring a photographer. And he probably said, well, I don't want to be remembered as some young fellow that got cancer. Just a statistic. Get my track medals, and we'll pin them on my chest. And they could see that I was Sean Marcy. So they got the track medals, and they pinned him on his chest. And he let this picture be taken as a gift for each and every one of you. His friend said, do you have some message for the other young ones? And his, Sean looked up, holding back the tears, never cried once, and said, my message for the young ones is, don't dip snuff. Don't use tobacco. And not long after that, at the age of 19, surrounded by friends and family. The boy died at 19. So let's take a look and remember this boy. We will remember you, Sean. We will remember your sad, tragic, short life. And we will not use dip tobacco, and we will not start smoking in honor of you. And thank you for your courage to let yourself be photographed like that. I want to conclude my talk today with an initiation, as I promised. Thousands of years ago, they would take the young ones out in the forest or the desert. They would initiate them, make them uncomfortable, deprive them of sleep or food, give them a little pain, toughen them up for life, maybe. I couldn't figure out why. Finally, it came to me. They said, until today, you've been a child. We, try, we adults, we've tried to shield your eyes from the difficulty in this world, but we adults know that one day a grandparent may die, and it hurts us adults so bad. And a lot of adults, when they're in pain, why they run off to a bar to drink away their pain, or they take drugs that destroy their lives, or they start smoking and watch the smoke curling in the air, they go back to cigarettes when they'd quit, maybe. They don't want to feel their pain. The initiation is, feel your pain, stay with it, and above all, when you have it, Talk to a trusted teacher, the school counselor, your friends, your parents. Talk to someone, and together we will solve whatever life throws at us. A lot of young people, so welcome now a little closer to the world of adults. You are initiated into life. I want to leave you with the idea that a lot of young people are worried about the future. We have diseases like SARS, bird flu, AIDS, swine flu, wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, tsunami and earthquake in Japan. Uh, threat of a terrorist attack at home, reports of global warming. We've got so much going on in this world that's hard and scary. And if you don't believe in the future, I believe that some young people may be more prone to smoking or drugs or alcohol, which can kill you in one night of driving. My message here is first, try to think positive. Second, Talk to a trusted teacher, the school counselor, your friends, if you're having a lot of negative feelings. Third, while it's good to think positive, it's also good to talk about your negative feelings when you have them to someone else. There won't be a good job out there for me. We had a stock market crash. Those jobs are getting less. They're coming back, even now as I speak. The economy has always come back. We will find cures for those diseases. We will find uh, one day world peace, and we will get through anything that this world can throw at us together because we're strong and we will pull together and get through whatever comes. And on the other side of any problems that come to us, why there are glorious and wondrous times coming, I swear it and I believe it, crazy, call me crazy, but I just believe that there are glorious things ahead and after any troubles we may have, which we'll get through together, and you will need your health in those incredible, amazing, wondrous times ahead of us all. So hold on to your health and don't smoke and don't use drugs. Don't drink. And one day, because the future ahead is looking amazing, and one day we will have a smoke-free society. There will be a society in which parents are there for their kids longer because they didn't smoke, and which tobacco will be no more. And the future ahead is looking glorious. Hold on to your health for it. Thank you very, very much. I believe in you.
You are the future, and I believe in you. Thank you so much.